Welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at what's called the factored theorem and we're going to see how we can use that to come up with a factored form of a polynomial if we're given some information and even how to come up with the expanded form or the standard form of a polynomial. Well, let's first let's review here some some of these terms that we've learned about in previous uh, lessons. In the first uh, piece that we see there is we have something written in expanded form or in uh, standard form. We have the the polynomial 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 34x plus 30. Now we could take the time and factor that down. Um, and if we did, we, and we're going to learn about how to do that in a uh, future video here, but if we did factor that down, we'd come up with the factored form, which would be 2 times x plus 5 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And then remember, once we have the factored form of a polynomial, we can find the zeros by setting each of the factors equal to 0. So you'd end up with the zeros being negative 5, 1, and 3. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to be starting out with the zeros, that last piece, and work our way up. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is by using the factor theorem. So the factor theorem, what that says in that box is what they're trying to tell us here is that C, essentially that is your zero. That's what that end piece means, that P of C equals zero. If that's the case, that means that C is a zero for the polynomial. And if we know that we have a number c, uh, that's a 0 for the polynomial, we can find the factors by taking x minus whatever each of our c's would be. For example, looking at this one again that's above me here, if we knew that the zeros were negative 5, 1, and 3, I could come up with the factors for the polynomial by saying the first factor would be x minus the negative 5. Well, x minus negative 5 would be x plus 5. The next factor was well, the 0 was 1, so the next factor would be x minus 1, and then we'd end with x minus 3. So that is how we can use these zeros to come up with the factors. Well, let's look at some other examples here where we're going to be looking at some graphs. Um, so we're going to have to use our TI Inspire, our graphing calculators, to graph these examples. So why don't you get those out and get those ready, and then from those graphs we're going to find the zeros and then come up with the factored form. And then after that, we're going to look at some other examples. So let's start with this first one. Okay, so with this uh, first example, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this into your calculator. So it's also important to remember when you type this in your calculator, when we do an exponents, uh, like x to the fourth, or this, when we get to the 6x cubed, remember when you hit the caret button, it's going to move your cursor up to the exponent position for us to be able to put the 4 in. But as soon as we do that, we are done with the exponents. You want to make sure you hit the right arrow to move the, to move the cursor back to the base. Otherwise, it'll put the minus 6x cubed as that as an exponent for that other x. So again, after typing in the x to the fourth, make sure you hit the right arrow to get the cursor back to the base. And go ahead, after you type that in, hit enter so you can get your graph. And then we can see what the or where our zeros are at from by uh, looking at our graph here. We don't, we're not concerned with seeing the tops of this graph, so right now all we're looking for, again, are the zeros. And we can see from this graph that we have zeros at negative 2, 0, 2, and 6. So let's go back to our notes here. So again, our zeros are at negative 2, 0, 2, and 6. So to find the factored form of this equation, we're going to... Remember, the zeros are the C using that factor theorem, so it's going to be x minus the negative 2. The x minus negative 2 becomes x plus 2. Now, technically, for the next factor, if I wanted to, I could write x minus 0, but that's really not a good way to write it. There's a better way, because x minus 0 is just x. So I'm just going to park an x out in front here. And then we would have x minus the next 0, so x minus 2, and then x minus 6. So if we were to graph x times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 6, we'd end up getting not necessarily the same shape graph, but at least the graph would go through the same zeros. And we're not going to take the time to do the next example uh, because it would, it's, you can see it's pretty easy here. But let's look at the next one. Because this one we want to find a specific equation for this exact graph. We don't want to find an equation that just gives us the zeros, we also want to find the equation that would have the same exact shape. So we're still going to start by finding the zeros. That is the first thing that we want to be able to do here. So the zeros, assuming that they're at integers, 
we would have uh, negative 5 and negative 3. And then we'd also have a positive 2 there. So those are our three zeros. Now I'm going to write this one a little bit different from our previous one because we want the specific equation. So there's a number that I could have in front of here that would mold this graph a little bit differently. And I'll talk more about that when we get this all finished. But uh, let's find the factored form. So x minus negative 5 would be x plus 5. x minus negative 3 would be x plus, x plus 3. And x minus 2 would be then our last factor. Now, if I were to ignore this a and just type in my calculator x plus 5 times x plus 3 times x minus 2, all in parentheses there, um, I would get a graph that would go through negative 5, negative 3, and a positive 2. But the graph itself, the shape, would look different from what we have here. Because this value a is going to change the overall shape of the graph, but it does not change the x-intercepts. It does not change the zeros. So I want to figure out what value for an a would get the graph to look exactly like the one that we have here. Now the most important thing for us to be able to figure that out is our y-intercept. Because we know at that point, that is where x is, whoops, that is where x is 0 and where y is negative 60. That's very important. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put negative 60 in for my answer here. And I'm going to put the fact that, well, the only way to get negative 60 as my answer is if x is 0. So I'm going to put 0 in for x. Now, technically, if you don't want to have to write this out like this, if you don't want to put the actual zeros in and skip to the next step, what I'm going to write down here, you could do that. Because 0 plus 5 would be 5, 0 plus 3 would be 3, and 0 minus 2 would be a negative 2. And if I simplify that further, I could say, well, 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. So we'd have a times negative 30, or just negative 30a. Solve for a, and we would end up getting a positive 2 as our answer. So I can cheat now, and rather than rewrite this, I'm just going to do that. And so now this would be the specific equation in factored form that would give us the shape of that graph. Now why don't you guys try this next one on your own? So why don't you guys uh, come up with a factored form and figure out what A would be to get the specific shape of the graph that would um, have a y-intercept of negative 624 when the zeros are at negative 8, 12, and 13. So why don't you guys pause this video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, you should have gotten negative 1 half as your value for A, so your final answer would be what we have here, negative 1 half times, and if you did it as a decimal thing, negative 0.5, that would be fine as well, but negative 0.5 or negative 1 half times x plus 8 times x minus 12 times x minus 13 would be the exact equation that would have a y-intercept of negative 624 and would go through the points negative 8, 12, and 13 on our x, on our x-axis. Well, let's try looking at a different equation or different situation. Here we want to have an answer with integer coefficients. All of our coefficients so far have just been 1. But we want to have actual numbers here, and greater than 1, where the zeros are 1, 4 fifths, and negative 2 thirds. So we're going to set this one up the same way. To say that it would be x minus 1 would be one factor, x minus 4 fifths would be another factor, and x minus or x minus negative 2 thirds would become x plus 2 thirds as your other factor. Now, we want to get rid of the fractions. Basically, what they're saying here, I would word it better uh, personally if it was me asking this question, but we want to write this without any fractions. And actually, for this one, we're going to take it even one step further, and we're going to write our answer in standard form. Now, a in this could, case could be any number, because remember, a has no change, there's no effect on the zeros or the um, x-intercepts for this graph, all a is going to do is change the shape of the graph. Well, I want these fractions to disappear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace a with 5 times 3. Why did I choose 5 times 3? And why didn't I just write down 15? Great questions. Well, the reason why I chose 5 is I want to get rid of this fraction here from this factor. Well, the only way for me to do that, or one way for me to do that, would be to multiply that times 5. And same thing with this fraction. I want to get rid of the fraction from this factor here. 
And the way to do that would be to multiply that fraction, 2 thirds times 3. And yes, you might say, well, what about 15? Well, we want to take, and I'm going to, because we can multiply in any order. So I'm going to take that, what would be 15, the 5 times 3, and break that up. And I'm going to write it like this. So I'm going to have the x minus 1 times 5 times the x minus 4 fifths times the 3 times the x plus 2 thirds. Because doing so is going to get rid of those fractions. So we'd end up with 5x minus 4 times a 3x plus 2 here. In this problem, we're also going to take this one step further by expanding this out. We're going to find the, um, this equation in standard form. And remember from the first video for this chapter, I showed you how you could do that using the FOIL or the extended distributive property, but we also talked about this box method. And that's what I'm going to show you for this one. Because you're going to see once we get further for this one, it's going to make it easier if we have this box method. But regardless, if you use the box method or the FOIL method, we can only multiply two pieces at a time. So I'm going to actually multiply the 5x minus 4 and the 3x plus 2 first. Okay, so we're going to end up with x minus 1 times, let's figure out what this would be. So we're going to multiply these together. So 3x times 5x is 15x squared. 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. 2 times 5x is 10x. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So combine like terms, we get 15x squared. The negative 12x and the 10x, those are what we combine together to be minus 2x. And then we have the minus 8. Well, now I have to multiply the x minus 1 times a 15x squared minus a 2x minus 8. Now, again, I could use the extended distributive property and multiply everything by x, multiply everything by negative 1. But what's going to happen is you're going to get this long string of information, and then you're going to have to weed through that and try to find your like terms, which can be kind of complicated. That's where using this box method that we just did here, is going to make this a lot easier. So what I'm going to do in this case, though, is we have two items times three. So instead of setting up a two by two grid, this time I'm going to need a two by three grid. So I'm going to need two rows and three columns. So I'm going to put the 15x squared minus 2x and minus 8 up here. And the x, I want to write that as minus 1 down here. Now watch what happens. x times 15x squared is 15x cubed. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. And this would be negative 8x. Negative 1 times 15x squared is negative 15x squared. Negative 1 times negative 2 would be a positive 2x. And negative 1 times negative 8 is a positive 8. And this is what's so nice about this uh, method is watch where your like terms are. They're these diagonals. So when I go to write my answer, my answer is going to be the 15x cubed. The diagonals here are like terms are going to combine to be negative 17x squared. And then these, this diagonal here is also like terms. Negative 8x plus 2x would be negative 6x. Then we have plus 8. So that would be our answer. Now I would make sure to write in the instructions um, if we wanted to have our answer in standard form or in factored form. But it's important to see how to get that final answer. So, and to, to get it in standard form. So I want you guys to try this next one on your own. So why don't you pause the video. Again, get your answer in standard form for this one. So why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, you should have gotten 8x cubed plus 19x squared minus 47x plus 20 as your final answer. Again, the reason why, or the way that we do that is we first want to get rid of this fraction up here. So we're going to multiply that fraction by 8. If you wanted to skip this first step and write it like this, you could. And then you get 8x minus 5 is that factor. The x plus 4 and x minus 4 haven't changed yet. Multiply these. Again, you can multiply these in any order. I took and multiplied the x minus 1 and 8x minus 5 first to get 8x squared minus 13x plus 5. Then multiply these two quantities together. Again, you can see my work over here on the right. But you get 8x cubed plus 19x squared minus 47x plus 20. Well, there you have it. That is how we use the factor theorem to come up with our equations. So good luck now as you work on these on your own in your assignment.